இந்த சபை மூலமாக சிஎல்ஜி சர்ச் மூலமாக இன்னும் இந்தியாவிலே தாங்குறதான மிஷின் சில்ட்ரன்ஸ் சப்போர்ட்டுக்காகவும் ஆனால் மட்டுமில்லாமல் எல்லா மிஷினரிஸ்ட்டுக்காகவும் எங்கெல்லாம் எங்களை சபை மூலமாக மிஷினரிஸ் நாங்கள் தாங்குறோமோ வேர்ல்ட் வைடாக தான் வாங்க தாங்க வேண்டும் நூற்றி இருபது நாடுகள் அதுக்கு மேலாக எங்கெல்லாம் அறியப்படாத தேசங்கள் எல்லாம் அறியப்படாத நாடுகள் எல்லாம் எங்கள் சபை மூலமாக ஊழியர்களை திறக்க வேண்டும் ஊழிய ஊழியக்காரை அனுப்ப வேண்டும் தேவனுடைய வளர்த்த கரம் இந்த காரியத்தை நடப்பிக்க நம்முடைய சபையில் இருக்கிற பிள்ளையுடைய கரங்களை கத்த பலப்படுத்த வேண்டும் திறந்த வாசலை கத்து உண்டு பண்ணியிருக்கார் இதுக்காக நாங்கள் பாரப்பட்டு ஜபிக்கும் அதை கேட்டுக்கொள்கிறோம் today that we just going to uh, meditate upon i guess as we are meditating upon this word this this week about the the work of the holy spirit in our life uh, today topic is is about um, the holy spirit who speaks i mean god uh, who speaks uh, in our life every day uh, because uh, from the right from the uh, from the beginning of the bible you see the god spoke to uh, to adam and eve in the garden directly then after that god spoke to to the people through the angels and all the prophets and when we come uh, into the new testament when jesus was he, he himself was here he spoke to the different people but after his death and the resurrection uh what he has promised that that i am going to send another counselor that mean i myself will come and dwell in a uh, in you also that's his holy spirit it lives in our life every day and uh, he speaks t- and every one of us in some part of your life that we can witness that oh god spoke to me maybe it's not some, something is a audible voice i you know through the through the word or through when you are you know meditative on through the prayer you know like god reveal his plan and his purpose in our life so uh today uh, the the word which is given to us is acts chapter uh, 13 verse 12 you can read from 11 the one word before that also no so uh, no no acts chapter 13 verse 1 and 2 sorry Now there were in the church that was at Antioch certain prophets and teachers as Barnabas and Simeon that was called Niger and Lucius of Cyrene and Manen which had been brought up with Herod the tetrarch and and Saul as they ministered to the Lord and fasted the holy ghost said separate me Barnabas and Saul for the work wherein to I have called them what we can uh, see here is as they were ministered ministered to the lord and they were fasting and they were praying they were in the presence of god and when the spirit of god sp- spoke to them saying that now separate barnabas and paul which they have been called for my purpose they've been called to work for the kingdom of god because when you and me come in his presence when you and me long to seek him uh, maybe through the prayer or through the worship or to have just a uh, uh, one on one fellowship with him god wanted to you know speak to speak to us he wants to communicate to us he want to communicate to us his plan and his purpose in my life uh, he want to communicate to us what he wants to do in me or what he wants to do through in my life you know god can speak to as in a in a different different way but one thing that you and me know he is the god who speaks he is the god who guides he is the god who strengthens he is the god who encourages you know whatever the need of that hour when we seek him the many a time that in my experience many a time i'm not able to listen to him or not able to uh you know his plan in my life if i look back and examine my, myself those are the time i have not seek his presence it is not that he moved away it is not that he is not talking to me it is because i am not just closer and to him he is not i'm not able to listen to his voice even in our natural life we as a live as a family together you know if i wanted to say communicate something to my son or my wife we will have to have an, a good relationship to each other so that's the time we communicate we talk we discuss when there is no communication when there is no fellowship what we are going to talk what we are going to discuss 
Like the fellowship is a key because the God has given every one of us in this room a uh, given a road map. You know what is our road map? The Bible. This is a road map for us how do we live how do we live every day in our life. And then he has given a you know put a, a compass, you know, you know what is a compass which in olden days they used to direct find a path. Compass is nothing but God has put me, you and me, a spirit of uh, my conscience. I have a road map and I have a conscience. And more than everything, he gave me a, a personal counselor, a personal friend, a personal guide. That is his Holy Spirit. So if I don't have this three in my life it, together, I cannot say uh, I don't need this road map. My conscience is enough for me. I'm not going to, f I'm talking about myself, I'm not going to lead a life which God wants to me. Even though if I have a both, but if I don't have a personal friend, if I don't have someone which I can rely on, someone who can, I can trust on, someone I can hold on, because the Bible says the Holy Spirit live in my body in every day, because the Bible says, don't you know that you are the, the temple of the Holy, Holy Ghost, or Holy Spirit. That means you and me are the temple of His Spirit. When I, when I, when I say that, the moment I have invited Him in my life, when the moment I have accepted Him as my personal Savior, that He comes and dwells in me, that you, you me and Him have a, a fellowship. You, me and Him have a relationship. So that relationship helped me to, you know, face my challenges, face my, you know, every day of my, you know, my daily life. So that means he speaks unto me. When, when I have, you know, that fellowship with him, when I don't, when I, when I won't get, when I get up in the morning, if I don't seek his presence, if I just rush, rush through, what fellowship that I'm going to have, what he is going to speak to me or what he is going to direct to me. You know, many a time, we always uh, will say like, uh, I want to have a longing fellowship with God. I wanted to have a fellowship with uh, my Savior. But the simple thing in my life is, what is my fellowship with my fellow believer? What is my fellowship with my fellow friend? Many a time, you know, like, I, I, I'm speaking to myself. I'm not just trying to, I'm not pointing out anyone. Many a time we always say, oh, brother, you are my brother. And that, when I meet that person on a Sunday at the church, then next following Sunday, when I come back, I again give him a hug, or maybe sisters, you all give a hug. Say, oh, praise the Lord, sister. But that whole week, I do not know what's going on in the person's life. And I call them as my brother. I call them as my sister. But I do not know. I don't know what's going on in their life. Because many a time, God only speaks in my life. When, I, when, I, when I'm a child of God, God wants to speak to through me in a in their personal life. You do not know what they are going through. Or maybe we have some selected people. Oh, for those people, I just call them and speak to them in the, in the week during day. Other people, when they come, oh, hello, sister, hello, brother. But where is my fellowship with that people? Because when I say that I have a fellowship with my God, when I say that I, His Spirit dwells in me, that God only, not only speaks to me, it speaks to through the people in me because, but always, I'm just saying what my household, I always pick up and choose people, isn't it? Hope this is what I want to speak. This is the person I want to speak. That's people, then when they come at the end of the next week on Sunday, I will wish them, I'll say, oh, praise Lord, sister, praise Lord, brother. But God wants to speak to in my life and every day. You know, so how I need an encouragement, you know, through his spirit, through his strength. As a, as a child of God, God wants to speak to through in my life, to other people's life. When I have, you know, when I have the, this one, because, you know, like, we, in, the, in this, when the world which we, you know, listen, they have got an instruction. They have got received an instruction, and what, and they were, not only they have been instructed, what we can say, they've been listening to the voice of God. You all sometimes, you know, when we read the Bible, we all get an instruction through his word or through the prayer. And another thing is, are we listening to that instruction? You know, I can speak many words, 
or someone can speak to you in many words, but if I don't listen, I can't understand what that person is speaking to me. That's the way. When the Holy Spirit, you know, you know, uh, speak to me, you know, you know, instruct me or guides me, I should have the heart to be able to listen to him. That my mind, that my body or my, my thought should be able to, you know, listen to him. You know, that's what, you know, the first thing, you know, what we say is, you know, when God speaks, he has a purpose in everyone's life. That's what, what we see, because the Holy Spirit had a purpose in Barnabas and Paul's life for the kingdom of God. So there was a purpose because our God speaks with a purpose because he has a purpose in every one of our life. It will be different from person to person. It will be different from person to person. But when God instructs, when God you know, speaks to us, am I listening to him? I cannot, what I understood in my life is, I cannot listen to him unless otherwise I take a quality time and spend at his presence. Whatever may, you know, happens in my life, there must be some challenges, but I should never fail, learn to, I would never fail, you know, sit at his presence and listen to his, you know, this one. Lord, show me your way, Father Lord. Guide me through, oh, Father Lord. Lord, strengthen me, O oh Father. Because when my mind is, you know, completely, you know, connected to his presence, he will lead me in, in a great and a mighty way. He will speak to us. He will speak to us in a different way. You know, that's the first thing is, you know, God has a purpose in every one of his life. When he's speaking means he has a purpose to maybe to encourage me that day, maybe to the purpose to warn me that day, or maybe a purpose to correct me that day, that what I have, I, what I'm going through, not only you know, to encourage, sometimes to correct, what I'm doing is wrong, but am I listening to whatever he's trying to, you know, like talk to me. Or the day I get up, just rush it through. Okay, let this be, he will speak to me, I'll listen to him when I come back. What kind of, uh, you know, the you know the, the 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 attitude that I have you know whenever I come before His presence, am I totally surrendered to Him? Lord, the here I am, a Father. You speak unto me, and my ears, my mind, my thought is closely, Lord, closer unto Your Father, Lord. Because God speaks when 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 uh, whatever the challenges we arise in our life. Sometimes you know He's He direct you know He change the paths. We may have a greater plan. But he must be having his plans. So must be great in a higher way. You know, you will say that no, not that. You know, move in another way. How do I respond? Because when we the see the next one, where God, Holy Spirit speaks in the Book of Acts, is, uh, Acts chapter sixteen, verse uh, six and seven. Now, when they had gone through Phrygia and the region of Galatia, and were forbidden of the Holy Ghost to preach the word in Asia, after they were come to Mysia, they are said to go into Bithynia. But the Spirit suffered them not. I'm just wondering, is this, I don't know whether the Holy Spirit is speaking to you or not. Because the moment I finish the word and you are, s you <laughs> you are there. And, uh, okay. So, you know, like, they had a plan to, you know, to go and minister somewhere. But the Holy Spirit prevented them not to, uh, you know, to, to speak, not to share the word, not to go there. Because... When we read the, that ch there's not much time, you read the whole chapter that, you know, God had a greater plan for Paul and Barnabas to transform in somebody else's life. It is not that God do not want them, you know, to share the word, but they had a greater work at Philippi. Because we can read the word, you know, like they visited a uh, person named called Lydia, that not only Lydia, the whole uh, family was being saved. Then after that, we can see the, you know, like when they were delivered, the, the girl who was being telling the fortune telling about the, um, uh, the, uh, the unwanted, the, by the bad spirit, God delivered her. Then we know what happened. They, Paul Jealous was put in the prison. And the, not only, you know, like when they were singing during, through in, during the time of their pain and agony, now, uh, not only Paul and uh, Sil uh, Silas, they were being set free. The whole, the whole in the, you know, in the, in the jail, the whole people has been set free. And the jailer and his family has been set free. God has a greater plan. You know, sometimes when God, 
in even in the ministry side when god you know like say this is the time just wait upon wait upon the lord you know because god has a greater plans in our life so when there are moment of time even in our spiritual walk if i am is closer to you know uh, fellowship with him even there is a time in you know, a god said wait upon me we mean god has a greater plan in our life god has a greater purpose in my life the only thing is am i am listening am i am listening and uh, uh, you know like uh, the next one what we can see is uh, in acts chapter 21 verse if you can see it from 9 to 14 you can just read narrated like here paul has been warned by the by the prophet by the by the through the holy spirit has been warned when you go to Jerusalem this is the way they are going to bind it he, he took out took Paul's belt and the way he tied his hand this is the way you know uh, you are going to be uh, bound so the thing on is the first one is we had a holy spirit had a you know, god god has a purpose you know through his spirit the second one is what is our response what is our response we all good i'm i'm not saying about myself i'm very good to listen very good to listen very good to plan this is what i'm going to do this is what i'm going to do from tomorrow morning and but what is my response when god calls me when god calls you when god gives some guidance when god you know speak through you to do the thing how do that you and me respond do i respond to his will or i say that no lord this is not the way i wanted to go on this way this is my plan in this accord go according to you know this way like here paul you know what paul answer was he said even if they're going to tie me even if they are if they have to die for the christ sake i'm ready to go that was a response of paul that was a response of paul in his life how do when when god speak to you and me when a god ask you and me how do we respond do i come with the many excuses we are, i had many excuses many a times i said oh i have family i have to do that work or i have work today i'm busy at work these other things i have to do or i say lord here i am for the lord no matter what happens no matter what things i go through lord i want to be a witness in the place even there are time i have to humble myself in that place lord take me for the lord i want to be a vessel in that place even i have to go through some humility in that place that here i am lord take me for the lord that i want to be in used by used for you and used by you in that place because many a time we always like i always like select and pick up people isn't it like oh this is the person i want to go because they are close to me that person no i don't want to but spirit of lords you know like when he speak to you and me i should have the heart of obedient lord if it is that will that i have to go even though i have not done anything wrong if i have to go and say say sorry that i should be the first person my feet should move first i not should be expecting for them to come and ask me like i should be the one to testify that me the spirit of god lives in my life the spirit of god guides in guides my life the spirit of god leads my life many of them i like uh, the, you know this uh, the, this don't even this was it's been a so much personal experience for me so much personal experience for me like i can say all those things lord but what do my life in real life the real life what do i do for the lord how many people that are i kept away not even talking to them not i'm not i'm not i'm not a fighting with or anything no i have not had a communication with them i don't know maybe there so there were some need some they need some word of encouragement not not greater thing but i have not spoken to them where do i lord my life stands of father lord and i say that i am a child many times i'm pretty sure it is maybe happened to you like many time god might have spoken to you in your heart that day hey pick up the phone or go and meet the person and you know speak how many times that we have ignored because of our busy work because of many things how many time we we ignore at the same time something happens to me in reverse i want the people to come and you know just speak to me and all those things like when spirit of god speaks in our life 
what is my response how do i respond what is my response am i responding with obedient or am i talking with a lot of excuses in my life because the spirit of god speaks spirit of god is live in my every part of my body so i should be you know like because I, whenever i'm going through challenges it's, he guides me through he helps me in my weakness he makes me to understand my he understands my struggle he understands my pain and everything but when that guidance comes in my life when he speaks am i able to listen to you know able to listen to the small voice am i able to follow him with the obedience that's a very uh, important because that's what he said you know psalm uh, uh, psalm 32 verse 8 psalm 32 verse 8 says i will instruct you and, and teach you in the way which thou shalt go i will guide thee with my eye yeah i will instruct you and teach you uh, many a time when god speak to you in a small voice that you and me are so nice to listen i'm, I'm very like to listen when he when he when he speak to me a very nice voice and a good voice and a good lovely words but when he instruct me i don't want to listen to that because the instruction comes with a sometime it comes with a a bit of hard wall you know words with a with a with a difficult for me to take it but i he say i not only guide you i not only strengthen you that like because i will instruct you i mean this is the way you should go these are the things you should just go take away from uh, from your life you know like when i say that i am a christ like person when i say the spirit of god dwells in me my life has to be reflect to how the christ was living in this world it's very difficult i'm not saying i'm a perfect person it is difficult but god want me to be in that place you know many a time god takes me in a difficult situation not only put us down you know not only when god speaks to you know like you know to instruct many time it's not only put us down but you know take me to a uh, much closer to him when the people see me and say that when i say hey you know that oh how do you know uh, Uh, how do you know that uh, how you brought this word of encouragement i say god spoke to me oh you did god speak to you uh, by word your voice i said no for me it's not audio voice maybe he might have spoke to me through i was meditating upon the word that i mean he just put you or me in my in my in in my, in, in, in my thought so that person you know saying oh really this is what i was going through how many times i have failed how many times that we have failed you know like for take for fail to take his instruction fail to take his guidance how many times i have got into the you know like even when i when the time when i lost my job i just look back and say it is all that i did not take his instruction i walked away from his presence i walked away from his but when he you know like when he guides you and me you know through the word when he speaks you know he is a god he is so loving he is so amazing you know many a time when he instruct me not to put me down not to uh, you know just you know throw me away it is for he you know he wants me you know much closer to him much closer to him that's what he is longing for much 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 closer to him you know when i say that he is my good shepherd when when i say that you know lord i know that you will lead me in a right path sometime when he taking me through some difficult situation when he leads me from the friend i should able to listen to his voice and should able to follow him not to doubt many a times in our life the doubt the fear all those things can creeps up in my life many a time i ask lord this is that my challenge but nothing's happening till now but how do how i am going to you know uh overcome this i start the start you know uh, the fear will come you know doubt will come you know like you all remember i witnessed many times you know it is was a we we and our family we all had just a f- nine days to leave this country just a nine days it was uh 2010 october 19th was our deadline and till 11th i did not have anything i did not have any certificate of sponsorship so but god keep reminding me that i have brought you in this land for a purpose and plan and you are not going but in my physically i can see nothing just a nine days what is going to happen nothing but i was at a, 
Do I not have fear? I had a fear. Do I not have a doubt? I had a doubt. But God proved me wrong that when he promised, he will fulfill. When he speak, that he will fulfill. But sometimes he'll take it to the edge. Because sometimes when I like, when I, uh, when Paul asks me something, if I give him immediately, there's nothing thrill in that, isn't it? Maybe. Maybe I take him to the wait to the last moment when I provide him. That will be much more, you know, you receive it much more happy and it will be thrilled. In the same way. I'm not saying it happens to everybody. Sometimes it, it happens. So I've just nine days and just three, four days before that, I was, uh, we got an interview. I got a sponsor certificate. Just the three days before deadline over, I posted the certificate. I posted the letter to them. I got it after a month, but my paper was already there. It was in the just then, a day before. A day before. God is so amazing. But when he speaks to you in your life and in my life, am I obedient to follow him? Am I ready to take his instruction? You know, like he's a so loving, amazing God. You know, what was the, what was the result? What was the result of uh, Acts chapter, uh, what we discussed, Acts, uh, sorry, uh, Acts 13, 2. What was the result of their obedience? And you can see like, uh, well, if you could read the three and four more, we'll finish it off. And when they had fasted and prayed and laid their hands on them, they sent them away. So they, being sent forth by the Holy Ghost, departed unto Seleucia, and from thence they sailed to Cyprus. And fifth also? And when they were at Salamis, they preached the word of God in the synagogues of the Jews, and they had also, also John to their minister. So the Holy Spirit, the God had a purpose in their life and they had a response. And next is, what is the result? They went down and they were preaching the word of God. You and me know the history of that. How God used Paul in a tremendous way to preach the gospel to the Jews as well as the Gentiles. So amazing. All the books were written. They were obedient to the call. And they went out, they preached the word of God. And then, I'm um, tremendous, there are how many, I'm um, like, uh, souls have been converted. Like, God has given a wonderful books from that. Romans, Corinthians, all those things. If Paul was not obedient to that call, what would happen? We don't know, maybe God might have used somebody else because it's always, it's for his kingdom. If not one person, he will always use another person. But because they were obedient to the call. When you and me are obedient unto when God speaks, God will can do great and amazing things in our life. Maybe it is in our in our in a in our in our family or this one, more than everything in a spiritual way. More than everything for his kingdom work. But am I ready to listen to him? Because that was the you know, like uh in, in Genesis uh, three nine. See Genesis 3 9, is it? The first question that God asked a human race. And the Lord, Lord God called unto Adam and said unto him, Where art thou? That was the first, first question God called Adam and this one. He did not ask him, you know, how are you? How was this day? Because the Bible says he walked with them, he talked to them, isn't it? He did not say, how was the day? Because he knew very well they have committed sin. So uh, where are the, the first question he asked them is, where are you? God spoke to him and said that the Bible it is written. It is say, hey, where are you? The same question, uh, close with this, God is asking you and me this evening time. Where are you in your life? Where are you in your life? Are we closer unto him? Or am I closer unto him? Or I'm, I'm, sh I'm showing to the people that I'm closer unto him. But in my life, I'm far away from him due to many reasons in my life. Many situations in my life. Many things which is going on in my life. I'm far away from him. I'm not able to be closer unto him. I'm not able to surrender the things that what he's expecting me to surrender. I'm not able to give up certain things in my life to for him to work through in my life in a complete way. 
or, or I have that, this one, I have that, you know, those kind of reservation, like, I can love everyone, but not per that person, Lord. I can forgive everyone, but not person, Lord. I can have a fellowship with all the people, but with not that person, Lord. Or these are the, my fear of my family, Father, Lord. Or these are the fear of my children. These are the fear of this one. Or these are the doubt in my workplace. These are the doubt in my family. Or these are the doubt in for even my ministry. If anything that we are going through, God is asking you and me. The same question he asked Adam and Eve. He's asking, where are you in your life? Where are you in your spiritual walk? Where are you are closing, uh, you know, closer to him? Is it the only a 21 days fasting? Or is it my you know, like uh, that, um, you know, our fellowship with the each other, it is like, it is, um, you know, it is, an, it is a long process. That's what he's longing for. That was he's longing for in our life. Because like, he is so loving, he's so amazing. You know what? Uh, uh, when we see the, uh, this, uh, about the, you know, we always say it's a prodigal son, but yeah, I'm yet to get a convinced of prodigal son. I always say he's a prodigal God. I always take it in my life. He's a prodigal God. You know, like, he comes out even when his son was lost, when he was away, went away. He came out of his house. And he again, he come out of his house when his son, who lived in the house, but not ready to enter in the house for the celebrating the feast, he came out. That's a father we have. That's a God that we have. He comes out when I go wrong. Even he comes out if I'm living with a pride or all those things. It comes out. That is a loving God. That's it. He speaks, come and speak to me when I'm in sinner, when I'm just away from him. Even he speaks to me. I think that I'm dual, living in the house, his, you know, in his house, but my mind is far away, far away from him. He comes and speaks. That's a God that you and me serve. So the same God is saying, I'm asking you, where are you in your life? And he wants to speak to you. You want to, you know, like to have a, a wonderful fellowship, a communion with you. But the question is, am I attuned to him? Am I surrender? Am I say, Lord, here I am, O oh Father, Lord. Use me the way you want. Guide me the way you want. Speak to me, O oh Father, Lord. Instruct me, O oh Father, Lord. Lord, I want to be a vessel. So, in the first number, we are going to be a vessel. We are going to be a vessel. We are going to be அடுத்து பரலோகத்தில் சந்தோஷம் எப்பொழுது உண்டாகும் என்றால் மனம் திரும்ப அவசியமில்லாத தொண்ணூற்றி ஒன்பது நீதிமான்களை குறித்து சந்தோஷம் உண்டாகிறதை பார்க்கிலும் மனம் திரும்புகிற ஒரே பாவி நிமித்தம் பரலோகத்தில் மிகுந்த சந்தோஷம் உண்டாயிருக்கும் என்று பார்க்கிறோம் ஸோ அந்த பரலோகத்தில் சந்தோஷம் உண்டாகுவதற்கு நம்ம என்ன பண்ண முடியும் நம்மளால் ஒரு ஆத்மாவை நம்ம தெய்வத்தில் கொண்டு வர முடியுமா முடியுமானால் நம்ம பரலோகத்தில் சந்தோஷத்தை உண்டாக்குகிறோம் என்று அர்த்தம் அதனால நம்ம வந்து இந்த மூணு பாயிண்ட்ஸ் நம்ம வந்து முன்னாடி வச்சு நம்ம ஜெபிப்போம் Thank you.